Hello everybody, for Tea Break this is Abbas and today we're going to take a quick look at the BlackBerry Playbook. This is the 16 GB version that I've received. Uh, very nice looking form factor, uh, great design, 7 inch with an active bezel that accepts gestures and we can turn it on by simply wiping, swiping the finger down from the bottom up. There you go, it comes alive, it shows you the tasks that are currently running on the playbook. Beautiful screen, it's got some speakers on the two sides giving really good audio quality, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. Let's have a look at some of the things that we spoke about in the quick look. Uh, Blackberry Bridge, uh, let's kind of go up. You've got your messages, contacts, bridge browser, calendar, memo pad, tasks, and bridge files. Sadly, no BBM at launch. I would have also loved to see the social feeds from Blackberry translated into that. Also a little bit um, iffy if I just click on the messages part um, and I have well there you go it shows me the list of messages and all but I have actually managed to uh, crash this if I just click on search and search for anything let's just type in the name of my colleague return and let's hope it works this time around but a lot of times this searching for anything at all just kind of you know takes you back to um, lock screen loses your connection with the bridge and uh, hey it worked this time around okay good good to know that but yeah it is a bit iffy i mean i've had it crash on me quite a few times uh, some applications missing like bbm and social speeds would have been nice as well uh, great interface very fluid i mean as you can see it kind of just goes along very zippy uh, you can have multiple applications open on the background browser let's just click on that uh, new trick i learned if you just do like that the keyboard comes up on this side and if you go like that the top part comes down um, here shows you your notifications on this area i'm not sure why there are two icons on here one would have been more than enough it just shows you your emails that are unread on your blackberry uh, so we just kind of go up like that and if you want to close the tab you slide it back up or you can just click on that x uh, let's go to all over here and bring it up. Browser is uh, pretty decent, works pretty fast. Uh, although for some reason, let me actually show this to you. Uh, let's try to see if I can access the... Uh, tablet version of Gmail. And that is extremely sluggish. It uh, doesn't select multiple items. You can't star items very easily on it. You can switch to the desktop version, which isn't very optimized for uh, for a tablet. Um, and you know you end up tapping at the wrong area pretty much all the time. Okay, so here you go. This is the tablet version. Now, I mean, as you can see, the scrolling itself is a bit sluggish. Now let me try to select multiple items from here. Let me try to do one, two, three. There you go. It's just the first one was tap. Takes quite a bit of a struggle to get anything more. The first one taps easily, but the rest of them don't. Uh, as I mentioned, I can kind of switch to the basic HTML mode from here, but then everything is so... the lines are very small for a finger and, you know, you end up clicking on the wrong email a lot of times. Uh, Google Docs also didn't work that well for me. Actually, let me show you something on Google Docs, which kind of shows you a little bit of a limitation of a 7-inch screen. Let's see if I can... Alright, so let's go ahead and open a document. Um, mobile view. If I click over here, I just can't get the cursor to uh, type. I can switch to the desktop version. Continue to the desktop version. So this does, does bring up the browser and it does bring up the cursor as well no keyboard by tapping but I managed to get the keyboard up doing that but then look at how much space I have to see my document I can barely see my document now I can kind of click over here and make the browser bar a little bit smaller but again barely like two or three lines that I can see over here um, if I switch it to uh, the portrait mode 
then I lose out some of the top bit of uh, Builder. You can see the lines that are cutting off. I can't access the left and right side of my document. So yeah, I mean, there are a few issues with the playbook. I think it has, uh, it has good potential. Let me just try to bring it up like that. You can set the orientation lock um, from here. Uh, yeah, I mean, good thing that kind of came up. So basically, you can swipe between applications if you start from the bezel. It kind of, you know, moves you to different applications. That is Need for Speed that's playing on the back. Excellent speed, you know, very, very fast, where you can just tap up and then move to wherever you want to. Kobo Books is um, included for your ebooks reader. Uh, let's go back all media. You've got uh, podcasts, music store, videos, uh, all of that on there. Let's go back to all and show you some of the other applications on here. Uh, you've got Word to go, Sheets to go, and Slideshow to go which does work. Twitter and Facebook are just um, your apps on the web. Um, they aren't applications by themselves. So it's got potential. I think it's got great potential, but Rim needs to work on the software, bring in a lot of apps that people use, improve the bridge functionality. And I, I think they have a solid product over here that over time could possibly uh, be refined to be a true iPad challenger. But uh, Rim really needs to work on that, get it up and running fast. Um, for tbreak.com, hope you enjoyed this quick look on the BlackBerry Playbook. This is Abbas Jafarelli.